Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to be doing an unboxing of Roleplayer. Now, this is the Friends and Familiars expansion for Roleplayer. This is only the expansion. I already have the corset and the Monsters expansion, so I don't actually have those to unbox. I'm just going to be unboxing the actual expansion, but it is that bigger box that they've offered through this Kickstarter that's supposed to hold all the material from all the different games. So now, this is by... Thunderworks Games. So I'm excited to bring this unboxing to you. I hope you enjoy this unboxing. This can be played either competitively or solo, so there's a lot of different options with this. Basically, you're creating a character, and then in this expansion, you are then also fighting monsters as well as creating your character. Now, in this one, it's going to be adding familiars and friends as well, and so all these things are going to be intertwining, and you're going to try to gain the top score of the players, or you're going to be going against the table to see how well you do in the solo playthrough. So we're going to go ahead and see what is inside this box and if you're excited to do that then I need you to meet me at the table So I've gone ahead and take the shrink wrap off the game. Let's see what's inside. We're going to slowly take off the box. And of course, we start with our rule book, which would be awesome. Now, this is going to add all the in things that go with this expansion. Plus, I believe it tells you how you can set up even any of the other games. So it's kind of an expanding rule book as you play. So that'll be really interesting. Of course, see, they talk about some of the stuff that were from the later expan the last expansion, plus, of course, the stuff coming from the newer expansion. So it kind of encompasses all the different components that this game has made so far. So I'm going to go ahead and read through this. That'll be pretty cool. Now, of course, like I said, you can play this, up to, I think, one to five players. It might be six. I believe it's five. And it also has a solo mode, which is right over here, which, like I said, it does have like a final scoring chart you're going to be going against. So that's our rule book. I'm going to go ahead and put that aside. That's pretty awesome. Now, on the top is going to be our punch boards. The first thing I see, of course, is the new character classes they have for us. We have, I'm going to pronounce these absolutely terribly, I'm sure. It says Sheik or Shike or Shikey. Um, now, the way this works is, of course, this whole thing punches out as the board itself. And then each of these, as you can tell, does say to throw these away. But these over here, you do not throw away. You're going to keep these because these are going to be part of the game components. They actually put the tiles or t tokens for the game actually on the character sheets, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go through some of these and see what we find. We found this one. We also have s the Sarian. We have the Vargar. And what else do we have? We have the Kalik. And that's it. Then we got our familiars. Now, these characters can, of course, be played male or female. They have both sides here. So this is, I believe, the male side, and the other side is the female side, which is pretty cool. So you can decide which side you want to be. It really gives you a lot of different flexibility in this game as what you want to be. Now, of course, the, uh, the sex of the character really isn't going to play a part in the actual scoring of the game. It may in some of the cards, especially in this new expansion. I don't know all the cards in here, but in the previous expansions, it really hasn't had anything to do with it. Of course, of course down here, we have gold tokens. These are our gold tokens. You get them for every single one of the expansions. So that's them. Now, the next thing we have, of course, is looks like it's going to be our familiars. So we have the Horned Viper and, and of course, more punch outs that we're going to do. And it has some rules for it over here. So let's take a look at one of these. I will tell you, I'm not I'm not fully understand how I don't fully understand how these played yet because I have not read through the rules. So let's take a look. It says when you place a die on the Horned Viper, you may use one of your skill cards, even if it's exhausted without moving your alignment marker. Okay, that's pretty cool. There are some, so these are going to help with certain rules in the game that are going to be pretty cool. Let's see what this one is. I'm just going to punch another one out and check it out. It says, Hardy, when you place a die on the ice bear, you may increase the face value of any die on your character sheet by two. Oh, that's going to be really good. So these familiars are going to boost your character. So the way this game works is you're going to be slotting dice into each one of these places, and you're going to attempt to create a character with its stats here and the stats are going to also manipulate or gain points based on your class your backstory and also your alignment you're going to gain points for i'm going to show you some of that as we unbox this you'll see some of the cards that go along with this and of course each of these ad attributes gives you a certain action you can do when you place a die so that's another thing that the the dice can do as well this is a really cool game it's a really neat way and it's very like it actually has this neat puzzle to it that do I put a die here to gain this, or maybe not that? I'm going to not miss out on something because of that. But here's some of the other characters. We've got Shadow Drake, Flame Imp. Now, of course, this is really what the expansion is all about, so there's going to be a lot of these. we got wolves, warthogs. we got, what's this, a long-tailed weasel. That sounds pretty awesome. 
We got, oh, a Scorch Phoenix. That looks absolutely awesome. Let's take a look at that one because that looks really cool. When you place a die on the Scorch Phoenix, you have, if you have less than four gold, gain enough gold to make up the difference. That's pretty cool. So it's going to be able to help you gain some gold. Not to mention it looks really cool. And I don't know what these powers are down here. I'll have to figure those out as we play. Maybe it's how powerful the monster, the familiar is compared to other familiars. Like when it comes to maybe these powers over here, manipulating your character. Not sure. Now we do have a lot of cards. And of course, this game does come with a lot of dice. These are going to be used for experience tokens. These were originally brought out in the Monsters expansion, but they had have added more. These are also a t dice used for that expansion as well. And they're used mainly just for attack, but it also might be using it for other things in this expansion. Now we also have some new dice. These are really cool. Now I'm going to explain how these split dice work a little bit later because there are some cards I want to show first that might actually give us an explanation of these. So let's go ahead and look through some of these cards and maybe I can show you a little bit better on what these split dice are actually used for. So I've gone ahead and opened some of the cards. Here's our first set of cards. It has a, these are going to be market cards. We're going to put those down and you're going to be placing your token on here and gaining either gold or the, this number is going to be your draft number for in the market. And if you ever watch any playthroughs, that's what you'll know. And by the way, there are some really good playthroughs of this out there. And the Colin over at One Stop Co-op Shop did two playthroughs of this, of the core game. I really recommend checking those out. He did a fantastic job. I'm going to put a link to that in the description below and I might even put a link to it right up here. All right. Now, let's see what else we have. Okay, this is perfect. So here is a character's class. He's going to be a Centurion. So they've added some new classes to this game. If you're able to get your attribute score to become these numbers, you're able to gain this much points when you go to play the game. Now, of course, each of these dice have different colors on them, purple and green, for example. Now, these are new dice that have come in this expansion. The original expansion only has single colored dice, and they go from one to six. In the Monsters expansion, they did add another type of dice, but that's not something I'm planning to talk about right now. It's it, a three to eight die, and it doesn't help with you at all. But if you notice, each of these characters are a different color. So if you place your character's color die on your board, you're going to gain a point at the end when you score. Now, this one would be considered green and purple, so it's a, it actually can be counted as both. And why would that matter if you're only looking for green? Because also you're going to be gaining these backstory cards as well. And these backstory cards are going to have places where if you put these dice it colors in these certain spaces, you're going to gain points as well at the end of the game. So when you need a green die, you could use this in this spot. Now, if you needed this color, you could also put it in this spot as well as you, while you're building your character. Now, this die, the interesting thing is, even though you're gaining these two colors, which might help you. So if you put it here to get the purple, you're also going to get green for your character because you might have the green character because that's actually potentially multiple points by putting this one die down. Now, of course, the only bad thing is this die can only reach up to a point value of four. So if you needed to get 18 in that area, you're not going to be able to get that because four plus uh, 12 because the other two could be sixes aren't going to be enough. Of course, there is that three to eight die in one of the newer expansions, the Monsters expansion that could maybe help counterbalance that. But that's what these new dice are. I just wanted to kind of explain it showing some of the cards because otherwise it, they might not make full sense. So we do have some new classes which are cool and they are, of course, double sided. And each of them has a certain power that you're going to be able to use in the game. Also, we have some new backstory cards as well, which, of course, have a little bit of a plot about your character, or I should say just a little, just a little info about them. It really doesn't have anything to do with the game. The only thing that matters are these over here, but it's kind of cool to hear kind of a little bit about how your artificer is and what he's all about. So we have some more of these, and each one of these has a different pattern on it, and you're going to try to create that pattern as you're playing the game with those dice. So it's really cool. Again, check out Colin's playthrough if you want to take a look at how this game is played. It's really cool. Now, what do we have here? I'm going to guess these are some of the monsters. They've added new monsters to this game. So we have some more monsters, and these are function a little bit different. I'll, here, I'll explain how they function. If you decide not to buy a card, you can go hunt one of these monsters, and these monsters are going to help you in actually fighting the main monster at the end of the game, which is going to give you even more bonus points if you can do it. If you're able to take out some of these monsters, you'll learn a little bit about the actual big monster, and it'll help you in the final fight. And these monsters, of course, you're going to be rolling these other orange dice, when attacking them based on some of the stuff here. So this one, for example, will give you plus one combat die for each face value of one on your character sheet. So if you have three ones, you're going to gain three extra dice, so you're going to be able to roll four because you automatically start with one, and then you're going to see what number happens, and then you're going to be gaining either experience points, wounds, or you're going to be gaining it as a trophy. And look, this one's going to be allowing me to do one of the actions on my character board. That's a new thing. I don't think that was found in the original Monsters expansion. So there's some new monsters that each even have some new abilities in here. That's pretty cool. 
So these are just the like your minions, your minion monsters. And these are in two different values, one and two. The two value monsters, of course, are more tough. This one needs like up to 19 to beat it, where this one only needs a 12. <laughs> so <laughs> they do get a little bit tough. So they do have some more monsters, and I believe that's all that's going to be part of this. Yes. All right, we're back to the beginning. So that is the first deck. The next deck of cards looks like a very large market deck. Again, we have some new market cards we're going to put out there, and I believe these are going to be, of course, because of the fiends and familiar stuff going on. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of these. I think I said friends and familiars, and I believe it's supposed to be fiends and familiars, which is pretty funny. Of course it is. <laughs> it's fiends and familiars. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. All right, so here's some really cool new things for the market. The market is a deck of cards that are going to be flipped over and you can buy these based on a gold value and you're going to be able to use these and they have abilities or they're going to gain you points. For example, here's some armor. The armor sets all just give you points based on how many you have and well, dropped one in the box. That's okay. Let's see what else we have. Of course, there's also going to be a lot of other things in armor. Here's some armor, more armor. What do we got here? Scrolls. These are going to be used right when you buy them and they can do a usually pretty powerful stuff. Immediately refresh all of your skill cards. That's pretty good. Here's a skill card, for example. You're going to be able to gain one of these skill cards. Each time you use it, you gain a charisma token, which isn't too bad. We can banish a fiend. That's not bad. Okay, let's see what else is devious. This is going to be a trait, and this will usually take place at the end of the game. You'll be able to, if you can meet this requirement, you gain the ability, the power of that card or the point values that are going to be associated with it. For example, you're going to gain three if your familiar's power score is 16 or more. If you can get your familiar to that power level, you're going to gain three at the end of the game. Now, is that going to happen? It all depends on some how your drafting ability and how you play through your game. All right, let's see what else we've got. We've got, of course, some weapons, some new weapons. Now, of course, you can only hold two hands worth of weapons, so you have to pick carefully what weapons you want. There's some, well, War Lance. That looks pretty cool. When you select the highest initiative card, gain two gold. Oh, sweet. All right. And then, of course, we have more armor down here and some more scrolls, some more skills. I'm not going to go through all these. If you're interested in seeing some of these, I'm sure there might be a couple other videos out there that can show you that. Also, maybe a playthrough or two will show you some. What's this? We also got a Call to Adventure card. This says, when drawn, this card... Discard this card from the market and replace it from the market deck. Important for the rest of the game, place only one die per initiative card instead of two. Oh, that must be a new mechanic that's found in this game. What's this? Oh, and it's a setup guide, too, on the back. That's pretty cool. All right, and see, you can l set the game up in multiple ways. It even shows you how the different ways are done. So if you want to just play with the friends, Fiends and Familiars expansion. If you want to play the Fiends and Familiar and the Monsters expansion, you can set it up like this. So it does teach you how to do all the different setups as well. So here's the next cards. Then we come to these smaller cards. And these are, we found a Fiend card. Let's see what that one looks like. It says Fiend of Weakness. When you place a die in the Strength or Constitution attribute roll, gain two injury tokens. Well, that doesn't sound very good. Those are going to be, you're going to lose uh, value or you're gonna, it takes hard, it's hard to kill the main monster at the end. You're going to have to subtract two from your roll for two injuries. Each injury is negative one to the roll. So these fiends, I don't think you want to get them. It doesn't sound very good. They don't sound very happy. They're definitely not friends. <laughs> that's for sure. When you go on the hunt, you cannot spend XP to re-roll. So that's what power you can do while you're hunting. So these things are going to be detriments. Here, of course, is just another player reference card on how to gain gold and how to spend XP or gold when you're playing the game. Some of it has expanded because of the new expansion. So there we go. We have those. We have more fiends. And then here are some of these. This is an attack card. For the Cyclops, each monster is going to gain three different cards that are going to help you understand or gain bonuses when trying to fight against the main monster. Now, of course, there's three of each of these, so you're never sure which one you're actually going against. For example, if you drew, drew this one, it's going to have Desperate Jab. All players gain two combat dice for each skill or trait they have with an arrow that way. So if you knew about this, you could start buying cards in the marketplace with this ability to gain those dice so you'll have the advantage when fighting against this monster that some of the other players might not get if they don't ever reveal this card. Of course, if everybody has a chance at revealing this, if they're able to defeat one of those minions. I know I'm kind of explaining the game a lot as I'm showing you the b unboxing, and I hope you don't mind. Let's see here. Some more fiends. They're all very similar. They're all detriments. When you buy an armor card, you must pay double the normal cost. Oh, that's ridiculous. Sorry. So these are, th and that's pretty much what these all are. Fiends and some of the attacks, locations, and obstacles. They're going to, and if you, and the, I'll show you the mat later. Actually, I'll show you right here. So if you look up here, you see location, obstacle, and attack. That's where you're going to put those cards. And of course, you've also got the monster that's going to go right here that you're all going to fight at the end. And whoever, if a, each person gets a chance, and based on how you do it, it's how many points you're going to get. For example, here is a monster. We looked at that Cyclops before. Here's the Cyclops. So if, at the end, when you go to fight him, you're going to roll your dice. And depending on what your number is down here, you're going to gain points based on what you're, where you fall inside there. Now, of course, there are single-player and 
multiplayer monsters. So it all depends on what you're playing. You can play this solo or you can play this competitive and you'll have to fight a different type of monsters. And th it's just really fun. I love this game. This is one of the only competitive games I actually own. And I actually don't play this solo. I do play it more competitive because it's just so much fun. All right, those are those cards. Now the next set of smaller cards are very similar to the ones we've just been looking through. Of course, there are some new alignment cards. Let's take a look at one of those. The alignment is another part of that board. And you're going to start with your token right here. And as you gain some of those skill cards and things, this is going to move around. And by the end of the game, you want it in the part where, of course, you're going to get the most points. Of course, you don't want them in the negatives. That'd be pretty bad. So Warden is a type of alignment. And there's a whole bunch of these. And every one of them has a little bit different pattern and a little bit different point. Well, they all have the same point values, but they have a little different pattern of where you're thing is going to stop. And you're going to try to manipulate that with your skills and when you're rolling your dice and placing them in your character sheet. We've got a counselor. Cool. All right. And I think they're probably all these are alignments and stuff. Yes, this is very similar to the last pack. It's all attack cards or for the monsters and also alignment cards are found in this pack. Now the last pack of cards we have, of course, are those monsters I was talking about. So we've got two cards for the Cyclops. One is going to be a single player and one is going to be a multiplayer game. Let's see if I can find the difference here. Two player plus down here and this is going to be solo, I bet. One player right there. So this is the one player. If you're playing solo, you're going to be fighting against this Cyclops. If you're playing multiplayer, this is the Cyclops you're going to be going against. That's the color it's associated with. You only are going to fight monsters that are not as similar to the colors of the people have chosen. For example, if we decided to take that red classed character, you're not going to be fighting against that red enemy. You're only be fighting against ones that aren't actually part of the other what other people have actually taken. So we also have some. We got a Gorgon. We've got a Griffin. I'm really excited to get new monsters. That's really awesome. We got a Hydra. We got a Leviathan. Look at that thing. That thing looks awesome. All right. The next. Oh, a Megapede. Fantastic. Deathly afraid of bugs. That's an awesome card. All right. Let's see here. This is going to be our play rate. I bet it's going to go through the sequence of turns. And I bet on the back, this is your scoring if you want to use this. That's one of your options. I actually just use a calculator because <laughs> I'm not real good at math. All right, so we have five of these. So that's our player sequence things. And that's really about all there is for this expansion. Now, this box is really big. So obviously, as you saw, there's so much that there is a ton for this game that's already been made. The core set, the monsters edition, and also now we have our fiends and familiars. And all that can fit in here so I can actually get rid of the other boxes. That's really cool. Now, I did also pledge for the player mat or the sorry the game mat because it looks really cool and also helps me out figuring out where I'm going to put all the things we have of course our monsters over here this is our market deck right here and we'll have to see how this works up here all right that is role player the unboxing of the fiends and familiars that I originally thought was friends <laughs> friends and familiars so there you go this game of course is by Thunderworks games I hope you enjoyed the unboxing if you did don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell symbol so you know when some of the playthroughs comes out now I'm not sure if I'm going to get to this game or not I normally don't play this solo I like to play competitive and I don't really put competitive games on there because they're really hard to film but why why one person but if you're really really adamant about wanting to see a playthrough this I might give it a shot but like I said Colin over at one stop did two fantastic playthroughs of the core game please go check those out if you're really interested in how player plays again thank you so much for watching and if you're excited to see what comes next then i need you to meet me at the table it's